Now, two Golden Empire high schools, two opportunities to bring home the hardware. The Independence Falcons in the Bay Area, the Liberty Patriots battling down south. Everything on the line tonight on a special gridiron edition of 17 News. Good evening and good to have you with us for this special edition of 17 News at 5. I'm Moses Small. We begin tonight with a pair of state championship matchups. Kern County rooting for both the Independence Falcons and the Liberty Patriots. We have live coverage from up and down the state. But first, 17's Taylor Shalom takes a look back at how both teams punched their ticket to the ultimate sports stage. A game-winning pick. A police escort in a packed house. Just three of the indelible memories forever encapsulating the magic displayed on two football fields some 150 miles apart. After starting their season with six straight losses, Tyler Shahabo's team reminded us all of the power of perseverance. You ask any of these boys, I don't think they'd be surprised because they knew what we had, so just excited to be able to, to get to that, you know, the holy grail of all football, no matter if you're in the pros or in college. Playing for a state championship is, is you know, up there with some of the greatest things in life, so I'm, I'm excited for these boys to be able to have that opportunity. On International Persons with Disabilities Day, the paralyzed leader in his independence found outlasted Venice. There was like five seconds left, you know, and I was like, well, we got to make a play. And our coaches always say big plays come with big players, so I just had to do the job. The game may have ended with a last-second interception by DeMonte Mott, but it was LaDon Denmark who stole the show. With his deceased mom and dad top of mind, the senior quarterback scored three straight times. What were those for? Uh, my parents. How'd they feel? I feel very great, actually. Play on my mom's birthday week, get the dub. Now he's off to San Marin High School, where the Falcons are four quarters away from capturing their first state title. The Patriots also find themselves a win away from program history. Oh, we're, we're just going to work, man. It's so much fun to watch these kids succeed and, and play the way they're playing right now. Liberty leaned on a packed Memorial Stadium Saturday night, using the crowd's energy as fuel for an offensive onslaught against Pittsburgh. I mean, it's awesome. Um, coach Nixon is a, probably the best coach I've, I've ever had. And, I mean, he's just awesome. I'm so glad that we this team right here can take him to his first um, state final. Wide receiver Jason Oliver went for the hat trick. Well, the Pats' defense kept the Pirates at bay. The final was 35-7, and Liberty had themselves a day. With a belt in one hand and some hardware in the other, Brian Nixon's boys will travel to Saddleback College for a D1 clash with Sarah High School. It's a really big game for us and the program in our city, so we're ready. This evening, we have team coverage live from the gridiron. 17's Chris Burton is in Mission Viejo, where the Liberty High Patriots are taking on the Sarah Cavaliers for a D1 state championship. The game is well underway with kickoff about an hour ago, and we'll check in with Chris for a full report. But we begin up north in Novato, where the 9-6 and six Independence Falcons are getting ready to take on the San Bren Mustangs in just under an hour. And that's, why we're, that's where we find 17 Sports Director Taylor Schaub at the home of his alma mater. Taylor, good evening. Well, Mos Moses, you mentioned it. I spent four years of my high school life at this school, and I've never seen the crowd this packed. We're an hour away from kickoff. They're expecting 3,000 people here tonight. I don't think I saw 300 in my time in high school. 500 just about Independence Falcons fans are expected to travel to Independence. We're expected to travel to see Independence tonight as they play for their first ever state championship. And this has been a long road for these Independence Falcons. At one point in the season, they didn't think they would even make the playoffs. They started the year with six straight losses. They've rattled off nine straight victories. They are now playing for a state title. They were in Northern California, and they have the chance to bring some hardware back to Bakersfield. You know, a lot of us didn't really think we were going to make playoffs, totally honest. We came together as a team more. Coach, really, he, he told us to just persevere, and once that train started going, that we were going to, we were going to go, go, and uh, nobody could stop us. 
Here are some players to watch out for in this one. For the Falcons, it's LaDon Denmark. The dual threat quarterback scored all three touchdowns in last week's semifinal. For the Mustangs, it's all about Justin Gwynn in this rushing attack. The senior workhorse had 34 touchdowns on the ground this year. He's averaging 160 yards per game, has eclipsed 100 yards on the ground in 13 of the team's last 14 games this season. Their quarterback also threw for 2,000 yards this season. For the Independence Falcons, this is Kern's Cinderella team. You know it. They started the year 0-6. We can keep talking about it. We can keep talking about Coach Tyler Shahabal, LaDon Denmark. They continue to persevere. Kickoff is at 6 o'clock here at San Marin High School. But the Liberty Patriots, their game is already underway in Southern California. And that's where we find 17's Chris Burton. Chris, can you give us an update of that game? In the linebacker room. Taylor, Brian Nixon has just about done it all. He's coached NFLers. He's dominated Kern County competition. But the one thing he hasn't done is lead Liberty to a state title. Well, he's trying to do that right here in Saddleback Stadium in Mission Viejo tonight. And he's got about a half of football to do it. We're coming up on halftime. The story of the game today has been finishing in the red zone. We saw Sarah use some trickery earlier in the second quarter to find the end zone. Liberty, on the other hand, was stopped around the 15 in the first quarter, forced to kick a field goal. Sarah's been taking some deep shots downfield that have not been connecting. We'll see if they keep that up in the second half. Both defenses playing pretty well. Now, Kern County has traveled well to this game, as you can see behind me, but there are eyes on this game from across the country, including in the linebacker room of the Green Bay Packers. Besides X's, X's and O's, he looks out for you as a person. Um, he wants the best for you in, in every aspect of life, um, and he'll give you the honest answer. Um, he's a great guy that came in, and he's really changed the program, and I thought he's took it in the right direction. Um, you can see year after year, he's, you know, we're, we're, we're a winning program over there, so I reached out to him and kind of wished him luck, um, you know, kind of, kind of gave him my, my best. Uh, I think I'm, I'm excited to see what they do. Hankins. Is run out of bounds at about Definitely some big minutes. names in the Liberty Patriots corner tonight. Now, again, we've got about three and a half minutes go until halftime, and as that clock ticks down, right now the score is Sarah Gardena 7, Liberty Patriots 3. I'll have more updates for you on the FFX Twitter account, FFX on KGET. Until then, live at Saddleback Stadium, Chris Burton, 17 News. Chris, thank you. The Liberty Pages proverbial trophy case is already packed full of hardware, but one prize has always eluded Brian Nixon in his nine years as the steward of the powerhouse football program. The veteran leader has never captured a state title at Centennial or Liberty. Nixon came close to the big game back in 2015, led by current Packers quarterback Jordan Love and linebacker Chris Barnes. Liberty suffered a crushing loss, 28 to 24, to Del Oro in the state finals. Fast forward six years, his team advanced past Pittsburgh. It is now four quarters away from glory, and this team wants to make sure he gets to hoist that trophy. It means everything to Coach Nixon. Uh, he's done so much for this program. He puts so much work and time into into us kids. He's he's done so much than just football for us. Uh, Man, I can, go, I can go on and on about Coach Nixon, but um, we're always hanging out with him. He's a great guy. He's taught us so much. He's taught me so much about um, just life in general and uh, made me a better man. So I'm really, I'm really glad to be by his side. 100% about the kids, man. It's, it's what it is. These guys are having the ride of their life, and why not you know, see them celebrate it and finish it right? And that's the one thing that you'd love to see. Should the Patriots win today, Nixon will join Garces, Paul Goa, and BCHS leader Darren Carr as the only active Kern County head coaches to hold a state championship. And after a slow start, Independence has rattled off nine straight wins to reach their state title matchup with San Marin. It's been an even longer road for the Falcons head coach, but he'd take it again if he had to. 17's Chris Burton reports. It was 2010 and Tyler Schilhabel had just led the Independence Falcons to victory. Starting on varsity for the first time, the junior quarterback hoisted his team to a close win over Clovis North in the season opener. That was the last football game Schilhabel would ever play. But his football journey was just beginning. 
every stop that I've had along the way has, has definitely played a role in it, and I'm grateful for all the opportunities that I've had, and it's definitely, you know, as a result of my accident. The accident. That's how Shill Hubble refers to the ATV crash two days after that season opener. The crash that paralyzed him from the chest down. He spent three weeks at Stanford Medical Center. A long process, pretty much learning everything, how to do everything just like a little baby would. His recovery was up and down. Six months in, he knew he'd never walk again, but he tried to keep his head up. My attitude has always been like that, uh, just to stay positive through anything, through any type of adversity. From Bakersfield to college at Boise State to a coaching position with the University of Utah, football was a guiding light. I, I knew that I always wanted to be involved with football, that I wanted to coach or have some sort of administrative role in, at you maybe at a college or NFL level. Shilhabel has a Division I coaching resume. He exchanges texts with Jim Harbaugh. So why is he back here, coaching at Independence? And that deep connection felt like I had a place here, that this was my home, and that you know I could make a difference, you know, not just on the field, but in these boys' lives. Ellie, 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 Ellie. It's 2021, and Tyler Schilhabel has led the Independence Falcons to victory. Nine in a row, to be precise. He's made good on his promise to make a difference on and off the field. Maybe 11 and a half years ago after my accident, would it, would it, could I imagine myself in this position? Maybe not, but once again, it's all due to the faith that I have, the family that I have, um, and then football. Faith, family, and football. Call the three Fs, faith, family, football. Faith, family, and football. But there are four Fs at the heart of Shil Hobble's life. That last one, Falcons.